Um, my name is Larissa Yonke, and I am from Minnesota. All right. So I'm happy to be here, and thank you, Patty, for inviting us. And yes, I love this city. So. Well, that's nice. And, yeah. And you do training with Inside Out training. With yeah. Coping, don't you? All right. Cool. So. And there was this song playing that really sparked my attention. It was talking about resurrection. And it kind of goes like, resurrections in my veins. And it's just talking about like the work of Christ and what he has done. It got my curiosity going about like, why was the resurrection the third day? I started thinking, what was the first mention of it? Well, creation, what happened on the third day? It says that God created plants in it to bear fruit according to their kind and it just reminded me of the scripture that says a seed cannot produce fruit unless it dies and it falls into the ground and just seeing the picture of christ even in creation that he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world that he is the worthy one that we are in him and by him and through him that we can move and we could walk in righteousness that we are empowered by his spirit it's not by our own might it's not by our own power or ability but it's all through his grace and his ability in us kind of going through the days of creation and looking at the day three the seed you know that represented christ that died and came to life again and it was already painting a picture there then I noticed like on day four, it was talking about the light for the signs in the heavens and for seasons and so forth. And it reminded me of the scripture later on in one of the Pauline epistles where he talked about um, let no man condemn you for Sabbath day or new moon or for they are all a shadow of what's to come. But the substance is Christ that we're walking in that light, walking in that truth, that even creation itself declares the praises of God. And that we are in him and that he, he has placed even more value on us than creation because he has made us in his image. He's made us in his likeness and he's redeemed us to new life. The fifth day of creation, that's when life breathing life first came about. It wasn't just plants. It wasn't just stars. It wasn't just light. It was... <sighs> The revelation of God just started to birth out of that. And that was the fifth day. And oftentimes you'll hear people say that five is talking about the grace of the Lord. You recognize if that's where the first breath was. So when you think of the breath, you think of the Spirit of God, where that's th through the Holy Spirit, we could do things that we wouldn't ordinarily be able to do. When we breathe out of that place, that's where we found our rest. And it almost reminds me of in Galatians 3. Did you receive the Spirit by hearing of the law or by faith? And obviously it's a rhetorical question there where it is by faith. And it's, it's through that faith that we experience His goodness. We experience His grace. That is the way we are saved. And saved, I, I read the scripture about by grace you are saved through faith. It is a gift of God, not of yourselves, lest any man should boast. So everything, even that grace, even that power to believe is from him. Everything is from him. It's nothing of just our own efforts. It's complete dependence on him. And it reminds me of a scripture in 1 Corinthians 13 where it says that love always trusts. And that's just kind of going through the definition of love. And there's another song just kind of stirring lately by United Pursuit. It's, and it just kind of goes to that First Corinthians list. So I'm just going to turn there right now so I can just read the list so we get a clarity and a definition to it. So when you view the scriptures through Christ, that's what changes everything. That's what happened to me earlier today when I was reading Genesis. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. How did I ever miss this? Because I was just, I mean... I was just reading the account the way I'd always read it. I hadn't actually tried reading it through Christ and seeing him foreshadowed with the resurrection there. Though I speak with tongues of men and angels, and I have not charity or love, because it's King James here, I have become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and I understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can move mountains and I have not love, I am nothing. 
And though I bestow all the goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Love suffers long. It is kind. It envies not. It, it doesn't puff itself up. It doesn't um, behave itself unseemingly. It, it doesn't seek its own. It's not easily provoked. It thinks no evil. It doesn't rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. It endures all things. Love never fails, but whatever, wherever there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they will cease. Whether there be knowledge, it will vanish away. But we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect is come, that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, and I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Well, I'm not a man, but I'm just reading what Paul's saying here. <laughs> <laughs> For now we see through a glass darkly, but then we see face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know even also as I am known. Wow, so Lord, we just thank you for that completeness of revelation of love, knowing as we have been known by you, Lord, that we are in you and we uh, that we are holy and beloved. Jesus, that you just call us your own. Thank you that you were the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Thank you that you fixed the mistake before it even happened. <laughs> Lord, I just thank you that it is finished. I just decree any lies of the enemy fall off now in Jesus' name. We just decree that we are powerful kings and priests of our God. Lord, we just thank you for a revelation of Jesus is Lord. He is Lord. Thank you for a dominion. We command any spirits to leave that aren't of you. Lord, we just speak uh, peace and life and hope. Lord, just thank you for the fruit of the Spirit, that love, that joy, that peace, that patience, that goodness, that kindness, everything of you, everything of your spirit. Lord, thank you for that, um, everything in the right order. Thank you, Lord, that you have created us fully. You have created us holy and your beloved. Lord, we just thank you by your blood. We are completely clean. We are completely blameless. Father, I just thank you for peace that passes all understanding that will guard our hearts and will guard our minds in Christ Jesus. I just speak love. <laughs> and there's a scripture too coming to mind that says that the kindness of the Lord leads somebody to repentance. So it's that switching of that mind sets. And I was thinking about too, because Jesus wasn't always nice, but he was the exact embodiment of love. And what he did is the most loving thing. There's somebody that's paralyzed. You think, well, just kind of give some pillows or whatever. He's just like, get up. And I'm like, oh, that sounds kind of rude. But he was love embodied. And that kind of goes back to that resurrection theme of when he died on the cross, that, that life he gave. It says that no greater love has any man than this, that he laid, that he laid down his life for his friends. And he was even laying down his life for people that weren't friendly to him. <laughs> he was a friend of people that weren't even accepting him. That's just awesome because he, he saw a value. He saw a purpose for them beyond what they were acting like. They were enemies of God in their mind. But he reconciled them. Wow. <sighs> Recognizing even the woman caught in the act of adultery, he empowered her out of that. Yes. And the way that he saw, he, he worked through this, yes. the law of the spirit of life. He didn't work through the law of sin and death. That's how he was able to get her up and out of that. And that is true love because it, re it hates everything that destroys, everything that brings death. It cannot be love unless it hates evil. Because evil wars against love they are opposites they are they are fear and love are opposites the spirit that he has placed within us is his own it is love if we start feeling afraid that's not even us that's another spirit that's not even who i am fear does not define me and even as i'm saying that i recognize a boldness rising up 
I used to think that I was shy, but I realized, no, I was not born shy. Because <laughs> I was listening to myself as a tape recording as a five-year-old. I'm like, oh my goodness. I was like, I was almost blushing. I was so bold. So I just thank you for revelation. Everything that you have placed within us, it's not something we're trying to grasp outwardly, but it's something revealed inside. It's Christ inside of us, the hope of glory, that <laughs> the fullness of the Godhead dwells in us right now, Lord, because Christ dwells in us. Wow, and the fullness of the Spirit is in Christ. The fullness of the Father is in Christ. Lord, I just thank you for that love. And I realize that even as we start to know this love more, we'll be free to act like ourselves in Christ. We won't be bound up and saying, I can't do this because I'm shy. I can't do this because I've never done that before. But we'll just be like little children, like, I don't know how to do that, but okay, God, let's go for this. <laughs> and that's exactly what the kingdom is all about. Like an unlearning of fear, but it's a relearning of what our father is truly like. Because our Father is light, and we are children of light, and we do not walk in the darkness anymore. We walk in the light, and as we walk in the light, we have fellowship with one another, even broken relationships, fractured families. This is very practical. It's not just, it's not like in some fairyland where it's, like, okay, now I'm in spiritual, but it has nothing to do with my practical life. But God cares about everyday stuff. Like you could be out in the garden and get bit up by mosquitoes. And then you just ask God how to get rid of them. And you just command him to go or whatever. and Or just release his presence through you. And you don't get bit up anymore. <laughs> it's very practical. Because we are made to have dominion over the earth. We are made to have dominion over the creation. I just realized as a new creation in Christ, we can take back that dominion. Recognize our authority in him that he never took the back that be fruitful and multiply but he only expanded that decree when he took it in a spiritual sense as well of producing disciples of nations and i don't know exactly what that looks like but i'm like okay lord teach me <laughs> help me out because <laughs> the Holy Spirit is our helper. We are not alone. We are not alone. He has never left us. He has never forsaken us, and he never will. Any illusion that says that God is not here is a lie. And so realize that he's placed his spirit within us. He can't get any closer than that. <laughs> I mean, he's closer than the skin on our body. <laughs> we are one spirit with the Lord.